Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. Firstly, apologies for not uploading any new content recently, but that thing called life happened to get in the way. Today I have a great woodworking video for you of a new wine rack I have built for my cellar. I will go through the process I used to make it with detailed instructions and diagrams you can use to follow along. Let's get straight into it with some calculations on how to size your new wine rack. The next two slides I will show you are available via my Google Docs page by just clicking the links in the video description so you can print them if needed. The first slide shows you that you will need 120 millimeters of space for each bottle when calculating how many you can fit in a given space. My bottle support timber is 20 millimeters square and the uprights are 20 millimeters by 40 millimeters. This next slide shows you how to calculate the number of rows and columns you can fit and hence the total rack bottle capacity. Firstly measure the height and the width of where you want to position your wine rack. To calculate the number of horizontal wine columns, simply minus 20 millimetres from your width measurement and divide by 120 millimetres. Here you can see that I can fit exactly 10 columns of wine bottles. Chances are your measurement won't be exact like mine, so all you have to do is round down to the nearest whole number. To calculate the vertical wine rows, divide your measure your height measurement by 120 millimetres and again round down to the nearest whole number. My calculation gave me 17 rows. Therefore, my rack should theoretically give me 10 by 17 or 170 wine bottles. However, this next diagram shows you that the setup I will have will include a bottle viewing area at eye level, which will reduce my capacity by one whole row as this will take up the space of two rows. Also, I have a ceiling beam, which will also reduce the capacity by another four bottles, hence my new capacity of 156 bottles. If you are wondering how I came up with the 120 millimeter spacing, well, the research I did shows that it should fit all the standard type wine bottles on the market, as shown here. Okay, that's it for the boring technicalities. Let's get building, starting with the pallet breakdown. Breaking down the pallets is fairly straightforward with a pry bar and hammer. Just take your time to avoid splitting the wood and make sure to remove all nails. I used four pallets in total for my build, two for each of the bottom and top sections of the rack. I prefer using Euro style pallets that are rectangular in shape and fit well into the boot of my car. As always with pallets, choose the heat treated ones as can be seen here by the HT symbol. By the way, the PL signifies an origin country code of Poland on this pallet, and the DE on this one uh, for a country code of Deutschland or Germany. Once I had all my pallet wood boards, I quickly ran them through my thicknesser just to clean up the faces of each board and to also get a uniform board thickness as the boards can vary somewhat. Now it was time to cut all the uprights and bottle support pieces so we could start assembling our wine ladders that would make up our wine rack. The length of your upright pieces, which are 20 by 40 millimetres, will depend on the number of bottle rows in your rack. The length of the bottle supports, which are 20 mil squared, is 260 millimetres. To make things go a little faster, use a stop block on your table saw. That way you can cut multiple pieces at once and no marking is required which is a huge time saver. Also remember to make a few spares in case of stuff ups or breakages. At the end of this process you should have all your rough sawn uprights and bottle supports. Now you will need to hand or machine sand all your upright and bottle supports so as to get a nice smooth finish. These will have a few rough edges and ends coming straight off the table saw. Please do not skip this step as the difference between doing this and avoiding it will be very evident in the finished product. And anyway, who wants to be getting splinters every time they reach for a bottle? In particular, take time on the exposed ends of the bottle supports. Now you will need to make yourself a jig to help assemble all your wine rack ladders. This is simply a flat board with an end piece that your uprights will rest against and 120 millimeter spaced vertical upright pieces 
who aligned your bottle supports. This is used to help you lay out your uprights and bottle supports so that they are correctly and evenly spaced when gluing and brad nailing the ladders together. Okay, it's now time to assemble all our ladders together. And for this step, you will need a damp cloth to wipe away the excess wood glue, some PVA wood glue, and I am using a brad nailer to speed things up a bit. Remember the left and right hand ladders will only contain bottle supports on one side, whereas all your other central ladders will have the bottle supports positioned on both sides of the uprights. Just take your time with this process and double check before nailing. Your completed wine rack ladders should simply lift easily out of the jig and you will need to put these aside preferably overnight for the glue to dry. To apply the finish, you will need some gloves and a piece of cloth. I am using a 50-50 varnish turpentine mixture, which I will mix in a nice open container. You may also need a coffee as this can take a while. Just boil up your cloth and dip it in the mixture and apply as evenly as possible. Let the ladders dry overnight. We will now make some spacer pieces so we can connect all our ladders together to form our completed wine rack. For my sized upper wine rack, I am using two supports for each of the front and back of the ladders. I have chosen to notch my front support pieces simply because I prefer this minimal look, but this is optional. The notches are again 120 millimeters apart and give a nice clean look to the rack. Here you can see my completed front and back spacer pieces. Now for the fun part of assembling the wine rack. To do this, you may need a helper for an extra pair of hands. To start with, get your left and right hand ladders and front notched spacer pieces and bread nail these together. Then keep adding central ladders one at a time as shown here. Once all the ladders have been added, it will still feel a little flimsy at this stage, but you will need to carefully flip the wine rack over so you can attach the back spacer pieces. Back spacer pieces have been marked at 120 millimeter intervals to make the ladder spacing as accurate as possible. I have chosen to use screws for the back spacer pieces to give it a bit more strength. Here is my completed upper wine rack section where I have removed the unwanted portion to make way for my ceiling beam. I've also added some upper molding to finish off the rack. I also applied the same finish to all the new wood I added. If you are wondering about the viewing section on my lower portion of the rack, simply use the space of two bottles to create this, i.e. 240 millimetres, and make your bottle supports longer. Then attach these at a 15 degree angle. Make a nice scalloped front piece to hold the bottles in place. And I have also removed every second upright piece from this section so as to open it up a little bit. And last but not least, ensure that you securely fix your wine rack to the wall. I have seen some hilarious but sickening YouTube videos of wine racks tipping their contents onto the floor when they became top heavy and unstable. And here is the finished wine rack. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and that you are inspired to create your own wine rack or to try a woodworking project using recycled pallet wood. I would love to hear any comments or questions you may have and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this.
Take care all and bye for now.